All right, going to be talking about the threat for severe weather, mainly out west into the central plains, down into Texas and up into northern Missouri and Iowa. And that's going to be Wednesday, especially Wednesday night and Thursday. What's left of that system moves into the Tennessee Valley as we go into Friday, but it's going to be kind of disconnected. All that upper level energy, all the dynamics are going to be lifting north rather quickly. And it's kind of this time of year we start to transition. Uh, usually it's typically the middle of May. We transition that severe weather zone from the Tennessee Valley and basically basically what is also known as Dixie Alley off to the north and to the west up into the central plains and upper Midwest. So uh, let's talk about what's going on here. Again, subscribe here, uh, like on the uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be bringing these up more and more as we kind of continue on with our severe weather season. As far as the outlook today, it's been out to the west from Omaha to Rapid City, and this is the lowest end threat here. This is the marginal risk. Not a lot usually happens with this, but you can get severe weather. Typically, it's a, like a summer afternoon in the southeast with these kind of thunderstorms. Uh, but this is going to shift abruptly tomorrow, especially Wednesday evening, as some really strong upper-level winds move across this area. Very unstable air from near Omaha up to Waterloo, up in Iowa on into northwestern Missouri, Kansas City, Topeka, Junction City, Lawrence, Kansas, Wichita, Salina, and this area in the slight risk. And this may actually get upgraded uh, based on the threat for some really large hail in these areas, over two inch size hail and maybe some isolated three inch hail. There's also a tornado threat here uh, developing late tomorrow. And I think tomorrow afternoon, the atmosphere may be capped just a little bit. I'll have more on that in just a second. And farther down to the south from Wichita Falls to Lawton, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, uh, you get up towards Newkirk and Ponca City, Oklahoma, uh, east of Woodward. That's where this dry line is going to start racing to the east and eventually the cold front as well. And you may explode with some bigger thunderstorms. What's left of this is all going to track to the east. This is Thursday's outlook. Slight risk here, uh, roughly from Little Rock down to Shreveport, uh, southeast of Dallas. This primarily becomes a large hail and damaging wind threat with the potential for some tornadoes here. But as I mentioned, uh, just for the Tennessee Valley, all that upper level energy is going to start shifting north very quickly. So up towards Jonesboro, just west of Memphis, again, Thursday afternoon. We're going to go through all the setup here in just a second. So here's that storm setup, the future radar. A notice 1030 tomorrow morning up into Wednesday. The bigger storms here uh, in Wisconsin, just to the west of Lincoln and Illinois. And we're kind of setting the stage here for the stronger storms uh, across the central plains. Notice two distinct areas here as we get into Wednesday uh, evening. Uh, this is when the energy starts to move in, but this cap may break here across the Red River Valley, which would lead to some isolated supercells here and damaging straight line winds, of course, and very large hail. This is where Storm Prediction Center is looking at potentially some three inch size hail. That's really large hail. And then we start to get the convection going uh, near Salina, Manhattan, Kansas, Lawrence, in around Topeka to the north of Kansas City into western Iowa. Those would pose a large hail, damaging wind, and even a tornado threat. But notice there's this hole in here. Uh, this area may be capped. If the cap breaks, of course, that threat of severe weather would really start to develop there. And we're going to get into these upper level winds, the cape, and the amount of energy these storms will have to work with. Uh, by 1130, so this is again overnight, Wednesday night, two distinct areas. We've got one across the Red River Valley, that most likely threat for the supercells, damaging winds, very large hail. This will be a late night event there. And also late night here from Lawrence, Topeka, to Kansas City, and towards Columbia, Missouri. And you also notice as we continue on here, uh, up towards uh, Cedar Rapids, these areas here, kind of a squall line starting to form with a damaging wind threat, uh, perhaps moving into that area. And as they kind of move a little farther north, very heavy rain up into parts of Minneapolis and the rest of Minnesota. But notice how the temperatures are cooling quite a bit here in Cedar Rapids. The fronts move through Omaha at that time, and most likely rain cooled in Kansas City by 1130 Wednesday night. Notice kind of refiring here as the upper level energy starts to move through the area. And at 7 o'clock in the morning could see some stronger storms begin to fire up from Kansas City into southeast Kansas and around Pittsburgh and Chanute, Independence just east of Arc City 
and that quickly moves to the east. And there's a real big reason behind this rapid movement to the east and how this kind of transitions Thursday into mainly straight line winds. But any isolated thunderstorm would pose a, a tornado threat here from Missouri into Arkansas. And then we've got uh, still the front yet to move through Dallas, Texas here Thursday afternoon. Very hot there, in fact, at 90 degrees. Shreveport, 83, Little Rock, 80. Notice still not much going on in the Tennessee Valley, so another nice day. Notice how the thunderstorms start to blow up at 6 o'clock in the evening from Chicago uh, down to Cape Girardeau, east of St. Louis, Little Rock, east uh, west of Shreveport, now east of Dallas. These will be uh, hail producers, damaging wind threat, and any isolated supercells could uh, pose a tornado threat there. Again, this will be Thursday around 6 o'clock in the evening. That line races to the east by 10 o'clock, affecting the Memphis area. But notice they were, if you remember, they're on the kind of the edge of the slight risk and marginal risk. The upper level energy at this time is all lifting to the north. The low level jet streams lifting to the north. Uh, so that's going to leave these storms behind. But there's still a lot of available potential energy in southeast Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and on into east Texas for very heavy rainfall uh, with those storms. These storms will continue to weaken here as they move into southern Illinois, western Tennessee, and northern uh, Mississippi at that time, and uh, that's what's allowing us to probably escape any threat of severe weather. Now, what you're looking at here is the Cape. This is 11 o'clock in the morning out across Kansas, Kansas City, down to Oklahoma City. Uh, very muggy air, and that's going to be fuel for these storms. But keep in mind, it, there's also going to be a cap that may not be broken in some of these areas, uh, so that will put a lid on some of that development. As we go overnight, notice here 11 o'clock, the big surge of instability here uh, from North Texas near Denison, Dallas, Oklahoma City, 1600 Jewels, Wichita, uh, Salina to Kansas City, and that's going to fuel these overnight thunderstorms through the early morning hours on Thursday. And notice how this all starts to weaken as we go through Thursday. Uh, this is the noon hour on Thursday. Uh, so that all just pretty much dies out Thursday night. And if you recall, all this energy continues to be out to the west uh, near San Antonio, Houston, southeast of Dallas, towards Shreveport. So as we go on into Thursday night, the threat really kind of weakens uh, off to the north. Uh, this is something I really want to show you here. The energy helicity shows quite a bit of potential here, especially Wednesday night. Look at all this as it blows up. And that's all because of that strong cape, that convective available potential energy. But also, it's going to be very warm here, so a lot of this may not be utilized. But any of this that is, that's where that really large hail and that tornado threat's going to come from. As we continue on into Thursday night, Thursday evening here, notice how much of this we lose and there's a reason we're losing this. And it's all because of the upper level dynamics. This is the 850 low level jet as we get into Wednesday. Notice the afternoon, we start to see the low level jet kind of picking up here across the central plains. We're getting these winds. This is again, 3,000, about roughly four to five and 6,000 feet in some cases where these winds are gonna be starting to pick up. Notice this big bullseye here that starts Wednesday night. And this is what's going to enhance these thunderstorms and lead to an overnight thunderstorm event here for eastern Kansas and northwestern Missouri and increase the potential for hail and damaging winds uh, if we get more of a linear mode here eventually as we go later into the evening. But notice the low level jet still very present here across southwest Missouri and moving into central Missouri. This is Thursday morning, so this would allow for a robust squall line to move through the area but also by the evening hours, uh, notice how this low-level jet's moving well to the north, and that is why we don't have a big threat of severe weather that continues on uh, for other areas farther to the east. So again, I just want to focus on where the severe weather threat's going to be. It's out across the Central Plains, northern Texas, and up in the Midwest Wednesday into Thursday. But by Friday, most areas should be just dealing with some heavy rain, gusty winds. And as this moves into North Alabama, uh, maybe some pea-sized hail, heavy rain, but it's all going to move out by 10 o'clock in the morning Saturday. I'm going to have another post coming up on the colder air that's moving in, official Blackberry winter, at least for the Tennessee Valley. That'll be coming in throughout the weekend. And overall, next week looks cooler than normal, especially in the parts of the southeast. But the severe threat should be uh, down from what it typically is this time of year.